Authentic self-esteem basically means that you know that you're as good as anyone else. So if we're going to have compassion for ourselves, we have to start by recognizing our own suffering. Hi, this is Jim Brown. Welcome to this YouTube channel where we discuss all things mental health. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist and licensed professional clinical counselor in Orange County, California. What I'm going to be talking about today is, is what is self-esteem and what is healthy self-esteem, what is unhealthy self-esteem. When we think of those words self-esteem, I think many people have ideas of what that means, but uh, sometimes those ideas are, are a little off. Self-esteem is not the same thing as self-love. Self-esteem is not the same thing as confidence in yourself. It's not even the same as self-worth, although all of those things, and particularly self-worth, are important components of self-esteem. Self-esteem is essentially the attitude you have toward yourself based on your own awareness of your own values and your own self-worth. So it's the way that you relate to yourself. Self-esteem is an essential element of having a strong sense of one's self, of well-being and the way that we function in the world. And our level of self-esteem, whether it's high, low, or somewhere in the middle, can affect all kinds of things like how you value yourself as a person, how you make decisions and assert yourself or not, how you recognize your strengths and abilities or not, how you feel able to try new things or, or difficult things, how you show kindness towards yourself, how you take time that you need for yourself or maybe you don't how you move past mistakes that you make without shaming and blaming yourself and getting caught up in constant self-criticism, how you believe that you matter or are good enough, and how you believe that you deserve happiness or not. When it comes to developing self-esteem, there are three main ways that are, are really problematic as far as developing self-esteem, and there are things that are pretty common in people. The first really kind of unhealthy way to achieve self-esteem is what we think of as performance-based self-esteem. What that means is I base my self-esteem on, on what I do. If I'm the best at my job, then I have good self-esteem. Um, if I'm the best at, you know, whatever sport I'm playing, then I'm, I have good, healthy self-esteem. So you base your self-esteem on basically what you do, your performance. The problem with that is that when you extend that in the extreme, performance-based self-esteem is fleeting and it leads to burnout and workaholism. Because if you're basing your self-esteem, your self-worth, who you are as a person on what you do, if you're the best at whatever you do, there's always going to be somebody that comes up from behind and sort of knocks you off of that pedestal, so to speak. So if you're only as good as the last game that you played or the last job that you did, that's a very fleeting way of achieving self-esteem. And unfortunately, it's one of the main ways that men in our culture achieve their self-esteem. Another unhealthy way of achieving self-esteem is what we call attribute self-esteem. In other words, it's what I have or what I look like is what gives me self-esteem. Again, if you're basing your self-esteem on what you have and basically your, your motto is the, the one with the most toys, you know, wins, or um, your self-esteem is solely based on your looks, your beauty, again, those things are fleeting and they're actually superficial. They actually don't really have much to do with authentic self-esteem. They're really more about ego and vanity. And then a third unhealthy way of achieving self-esteem is what we call others-based self-esteem. In other words, I feel good about myself, I have worth because you think I have worth. This starts to look very much like things like codependent traits, basing your self-worth on what somebody else thinks about you. That way, all of your self-esteem is dependent on other people and it's all external. None of it is internal. And the reality that authentic self-esteem healthy self-esteem kind of is an inside job. Healthy self-esteem 
essentially means holding yourself in warm regard despite your imperfections. Knowing your inherent worth, your self-worth, your value, even when you're screwing up, even when you're making mistakes, even when you're not getting it perfect. Authentic self-esteem basically means that you know that you're as good as anyone else, you're not better than anyone else, and no one else is better than you. It's not based on comparing yourself to other people. It really is based on identifying who you are, what you want, what you need, uh, what your values are, and, and valuing yourself. There's also something we think is relational esteem, and essentially what that means is doing the same, having those same attitudes of warm regard towards a partner or a friend or a family member that you would for yourself even when they're disappointing you or letting you down or doing something that you're not happy with. So you're not globalizing you know, what they're doing and making them a bad person or tearing down their self-esteem. One way of thinking about healthy self-esteem is to think about it as sort of a, if there's a continuum of healthy and unhealthy self-esteem, on the high end is what we think of as grandiosity. This is where somebody thinks that they're better than other people. On the low end is what we think of as shame, where somebody feels bad about themselves globally. And in the middle is what we think is healthy self-esteem. When you're grandiose, you're in a one-up position. You're better than other people. And essentially, you're contemptuous of other people who are beneath you. When you're in the one-down position, we think of that as shame, where you're contemptuous of yourself. Both of those are forms of contempt. And healthy self-esteem is sort of in the mid-range there. There are many things that can elevate a person's self-esteem or tear down a person's self-esteem. And our self-esteem actually fluctuates throughout our life. At times it's higher, at times it's lower. Much like the, the trait of trust. Sometimes our trust is high, sometimes it's low. The things that can damage a person's self-esteem are things like being bullied or being abused, experiencing prejudice or discrimination, stigma, racism, and trauma. Losing a job or having a hard time finding a job, having problems at work or at school. Physical health problems can really damage a person's self-esteem and mental health problems. Relationship problems, um, separation, divorce, chaos in a relationship, or problems with, with money or housing. Worrying about your appearance or your body image, uh, feeling pressure to, to meet unrealistic expectations, maybe things that we, we see through social media or different parts of the culture. One of the biggest things that can damage a person's self-esteem and lead to unhealthy self-esteem is being trapped in comparing mind. You're always comparing yourself to other people. And if you don't have a sense of internal self-worth and value, you'll always find somebody who's better, smarter, faster, prettier, handsomer. And that comparing mind really sets you up to, to tear down your own self-esteem. When it comes to building healthier self-esteem, there are some important elements that can lead to what we think of as, as healthy esteem for oneself. Learning about yourself, developing self-awareness, understanding what your needs are, what your strengths are, what your abilities are. Learning and practicing self-compassion. This is a tricky one because many people are very good at being compassionate towards other people, but really struggle with being compassionate towards themselves. Compassion is what happens when you recognize another person or another being is struggling, is suffering, and you want to make a difference. You see a, a friend who looks sad and something inside of you wants to help. You see a little puppy that's got a wounded paw and something inside of you says, oh, I've got to do something. That's what compassion is, and it starts with recognizing suffering. So if we're going to have compassion for ourselves, we have to start by recognizing our own suffering, how hard some things can be and then finding the common humanity in that suffering so our pain and suffering isn't so personal 
and then offering some kindness to yourself that you would for a good friend. Practicing or learning how to practice empathy towards other people, seeing similarities and commonalities between you and other people can lead to developing healthy self-esteem. And then it comes to the way that we think about ourselves. Learning to reframe our negative thoughts and beliefs about ourselves is, is crucial. And we all have a default set of thoughts, beliefs about ourselves, about where what we're worthy of, what we're capable of. Often those negative thoughts start to engage when something goes wrong in our life, when there's a problem or we fail at something or feel a sense of rejection. Learning how to change that negative self-talk into more positive, supportive self-talk is important. Also practicing healthy assertiveness. Assertiveness is basically asking to have your needs met. It's not the same as aggressiveness and I think some people confuse those too. Avoiding comparing mind is crucial, not comparing yourself to others, and challenging people-pleasing tendencies, those tendencies that we have to sort of go along to get along and never speak up for ourselves. Often in order to really do that work, we have to look deeper and deeper and deeper, and often it involves looking at old patterns, um, attachment, and even healing some past trauma. Another pathway to developing self-esteem is learning the art of forgiveness of yourself and other people and how to set limits, how to set boundaries. That's a struggle that many people have, but it's an important one. And sometimes you have to really look at letting go of unhealthy relationships. Sometimes there are relationships in our lives that don't allow us to feel good about ourselves. And we have to ask those really tough questions like, can I be the person that I need to be, want to be, and remain in a relationship with this person? Those are some ideas to think about when it comes to forming healthy self-esteem. And I, if the video is helpful, I encourage you to like and subscribe and sign up for notifications. We can let you know when there's more videos coming out. And feel free to put comments in the comment section, maybe start a conversation about this topic. Until the next time, take care of yourselves and take care of one another.